Good day, Grade 12s. My name is Karen Matsukere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks, and welcome to one of my lessons where I'm explaining graphs. Well, in this particular lesson, we are going to talk about normal profit for a perfect competitor. Now, to get started, as usual, we start by drawing our axis, price axis. That's uh, the one that is vertical, and quantity axis is the one that is horizontal. And uh, like I always say, you have to sort of tell a story and your story has to make sense. So for it to make sense, we're going to start by uh, drawing our demand curve, which is horizontally sloping. And uh, the price of 10 rand is coming from the individual is coming from the industry and um, it's, it's determined by market forces of demand and supply. The product sold by a perfect competitor is homogeneous as we all know and so this individual is a price taker the demand curve being horizontal it uh, tells us that this individual is a price taker as well so we have our demand being equal to average revenue and equal to marginal revenue if you don't understand that concept you need to watch the the, the lesson that introduces graphs in as far as perfect competition is concerned uh, that way you are going to understand why it's like that so this particular individual cannot decide on the price of the product because he takes the market price. He takes the price from other firms in the industry. So with that in mind, what uh, decision can this individual make? Well, the decision that can be made by this individual is quantity related, how many units to produce. And for him to make that decision and for it to be an informed one, he has to produce uh, at a point where he maximizes his profits. And every individual in a perfectly competitive market maximizes their profit at a point where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. So this is our marginal revenue curve. So we now have to introduce our marginal cost curve. And uh, as you can see, they are intersecting at this point here. And I'm going to level it point E, which shouldn't confuse it for equilibrium. In this case, it actually stands for profit maximizing point. And it's a common question in an exam. You'll see they'll ask you, identify the profit maximizing point. In this case, it's point E. So how many units should this firm produce? Well, uh, from E, we simply draw a line going down. And in this case, it's 10 units. So, so far, what we know is that the product is 10 rand and the firm is making 10 units and this 10 units can be 10 units per hour, 10 units per day, 10 units per month, whatever the case is. But all we know is that the product is 10 rand and the firm is making 10 units per whatever. And uh, the reason is because 10 is where they maximize their profits. As you can see, marginal cost goes down and it starts to increase. And where it goes beyond this, uh, all units beyond 10 are not worth producing because their profit will begin to decline. Um, and we can't really say they begin to make a loss because we don't know. Uh, when You don't mention the word loss or profit if you don't have the average cost curve. And many people make that mistake of saying, oh, they will begin to make a loss. So, well, it, what I can say is that if you are asked, should the, this firm produce the 11th unit and substantiate your answer? You would say this firm should not produce the 11th unit because his profit will begin to decline. Don't say because you make a loss because how do you know? How do you know? Um, because all you have is revenue. You don't know how much it costs per unit. You know the costs that this firm will incur if they produce that additional unit, uh, which would be maybe 11. Okay, so we cannot answer that. So let's get, let's be, now, now, yes. In this case, AC is on 10. So it, it becomes correct if you say it like that. If they produce the 11th unit, they will make, they will make loss for that 11th unit. That's true. That's 100% true. But now, 
that is now because the ac is there and we can see where it is but prior to it being there what if it would be up there it's not a loss it's a profit it's actually an economic profit no, 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 no. Look, I'm saying up there. What if it was down here? Because if it's up there, it's a loss. Why, why? If it's down here and they produce the 11th units and uh, it costs them a bit more, uh, overall, the firm will make uh, a profit for that. Let me see. No, 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 no. It won't. Because the 11th unit will be 11 rand. And they are selling it for 10 so they'll make loss for that particular unit but overall yes it's a profit but now that profit begins to decline by whatever amount it is above the 10 rent i think you understand i think it's not all over the place well uh to 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 tell what kind of a profit this is maybe it's a profit maybe it's a loss let's find out we simply say average revenue but we can see ne? minus average cost. So what is our average revenue in this case? Our average revenue is 10 rand, 10. What is our average cost? Here's AC, our average cost is also 10. So what is 10 minus 10? 10 minus 10 is equal to zero. So when you make zero profit, we call it normal profit. And should this firm continue? The answer is yes, they can continue because, well, first and foremost, they're making a profit, which is normal. And secondly, because this firm can cover its variable costs because we know that AVC is somewhere below the AC. It's always below the AC. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining me in this lesson where I was explaining normal profit. If you have questions, we have the comment section down below. Um, you can go and put your uh, question there. I, I try to make sure that I read all my, uh, all my comments. Thank you so much. Have a good day.